One of the most exciting things in my opinion when creating RPGs is to create our own world, populate it with NPCs, interactable objects, point of interest and all these cool things that comes with RPG Builder and then finally share it to our player. But you might be wondering how do I actually make one of my unity scenes compatible or ready to be played in with RPG Builder? It's actually very simple. First of all, any Unity scene can be used in RPG Builder. There are no particular requirements. You can build your world manually or using third party tools from the Asset Store. You can pretty much do anything you want on that side. But to actually, for example, take this scene, which is the Dreamscape Mountain demo scene from Polyart Studio, if we wanted to go ahead and take this scene and make it actually playable in RPG Builder so that we could load in with our character or that we could even teleport from another scene to this one with RPG Builder, there are just a few steps to go through. So, the first one would be to create a coordinate. Coordinate can be found under World coordinate and this basically as you can see is holding just a little bit of data and this is mostly just a position and a rotation if we wish to use the rotation values but in this case we will just make our own coordinate maybe something around here what i do usually here is that i create a sphere or any game object really i place it where i want I make it a bit smaller usually just to be a bit more accurate. You just need this to be uh, slightly above the ground. If you put it underground, obviously that's going to try to spawn you um, underground, but yeah, something like this works fine. And now I can just click new. I'm going to call this one Dreamscape. The name is of course up to you. And instead of manually entering those values here, I'm just going to drag and drop the sphere here. And as you can see, it is going to automatically assign the uh, sphere transform values. And now we can go ahead and save, it's done. We can also remove the sphere, it is no longer needed. Now the next step is to actually create what we call in RPG Builder a game scene. So this can be found just below coordinates. And here you can see that we have the demo scene, for example, here. A game scene is pretty much a unity scene, but at least RPG Builder knows about it. It's not just a random unity scene in your project, it's actually a unity scene that is identified by RPG Builder and that's also holding some extra data that we will go through together right now. So let's make a new game scene. And the first step is most likely the most important one in this um, process. So I'm going to go ahead and type Dreamscape here. But actually, you have to be uh, typing here is the exact same name as the name of your actual Unity scene. So as you can see here, we are in the Dreamscape scene. And this scene here in your project is like that. So I really have to type the exact same name as the file name in there. That's all. If you, do a, if you make a typo here or if you uh, write something wrong, Unity is not going to be able to find this scene in your project. But that's all. As long as you got this name right, everything else is fine. We can have a display name. This is going to be displayed to your player in the loading screen. And you could also have a description. Uh, we could type, for example, Dreamscape demo scene. The next option is uh, for procedural scenes. I'm not going to cover this in this video, but RPG Builder has full support for procedural scene. In this case, as you can see, this is not procedural, of course. The entire scene is here and handcrafted. So next we have some extant values here. What really matters is the X and Z of the extant uh, values. So uh, the way I do this usually to determine like what are the extant of my scene. Let me remove the, the fog here really quick. Uh, of course, not all scenes might use a terrain, but in this case you will adapt. And basically you have to find the size of your scene. So if I select the terrain here and I go here, I see the terrain width is like um, 1,500. So we can go ahead now and type 1,500 here. And I'm going to do the same right here. Below that, we have the map size. For this, usually I just keep it at 4K. It's a good um, resolution to use. Now, if you're a bit um, confused or not sure about those numbers, or maybe you type some values here and this doesn't seem to work well with your minimap once in game, just let me know in the Discord and I will help you with this. But usually, uh, if you do it the same way I did right now, you will not have any issue. Next, we have our coordinates. This is what we just created, right? So we have the Dreamscape one. We can select it here. 
Now keep in mind that the reason this coordinate is here, or rather what it is used for, is if for whatever reason you teleport to this scene um, in game, right, with your player, and uh, the teleport did not specify any position, so RPG Builder is going to teleport you to this scene, but it doesn't really know where it should, then it's going to default to this coordinate. But in most cases, I'm going to show you at the end of the video, in most cases you can uh, specify where a teleport should take you, obviously. Next, we have some options for the day and night cycle, but I'm not actually going to um, explain this in this video. I'm going to make a video specially on day and night cycle. And next, we have some actually also in, um, important ones. So we have a loading screen image and a minimap image. So if I go ahead here, I prepared some um, under art. Here, and here I have my minimap. I actually forgot to set it as a sprite, so I'm going to do this just now. And now I can drag and drop it here. And we also have a loading screen here. Um, it's just a dreamscape screenshot of this map. So this is of course going to show uh, when we load the scene. And this is of course going to be shown in game in your minimap when you are inside this game scene. Now keep in mind that minimaps are optional in RPG Builder of course. You can fully disable it or just uh, delete it completely. And next we have the default region, but I'm going to make a video specially on regions as well. So we don't need one. You can actually leave this empty, it's not a problem at all. And we can go ahead and save that. So now we still have the demo scene, of course, and we now have the uh, Dreamscape game scene. So now, how would we actually um, have one or four characters, or you know, of course, or players go to this scene? You have a few ways. So you can, of course, teleport to it with an interactable object, like a portal or thing like this. You could also create a, um, an effect. So under combat effect of type teleports, add a rank. And here you see that teleport have quite a few options. And one of them is game scene. And here we could very easily select uh, the dreamscape game scene we just created. And here you can type whatever values you want, right? Another way is if you wanted your uh, race to start in a specific game scene, right? So in this case, we can go under character races and here we have the human race and we can see that we have some start settings. So here I can just select dreamscape as the starting game scene. So when my character is created, when my human is created, it will start in the dreamscape game scene. And we will also specify where in the dreamscape game scene, right? So in this case, we will select the dreamscape coordinate we made. So you could have multiple races starting in the exact same game scene, but at a different coordinate. Very useful. So now we could actually already go ahead, save and try it in game, but we have two more things to pay attention to. Number one is you have to make sure that your scene is inside the build settings. So to do this, you simply go under file, build settings, and you either click add open scenes if uh, you were already in this scene, or you can find the, the scene file, right? In this case, it's uh, on the polyart folder and drag and drop it in the build settings. So that's done. Now it is ready and Unity will need this to be able to load the scene, otherwise it just can't. And uh, the last one is the nav mesh. Uh, I'm not going to show you this because, you know, baking nav mesh takes some time, but basically you go under Windows, AI, Navigation, and here you will have your uh, settings for the nav mesh and here you just hit bake and this will allow your NPCs to be able to move around and so on. If you are not familiar with what uh, nav mesh is in Unity, this is not an RPG Builder uh, system, it's a Unity system. So I highly encourage you to check on YouTube or some just uh, written tutorials and you will learn about that. Anyway, let's go to the main menu. So I'm just going to use the blink scene loader and go to the main menu, save the scene. And that's it. Now we can go ahead. I'm going to create a new um, character. Well, I didn't really want, I wanted to copy paste Dreamscape, but I guess uh, 4096 will do as well. <laughs> anyway, so now we're in game, as you can see. Uh, that was, you know, fairly easy. And now we have this entire scene ready to be used in game by your character. And we can do anything that we can do, of course, in RPG Builder. So we can start getting our items and like this. So all the systems from RPG Builder are not dependent on any uh, scene, right? You can just do them as long as you are inside a valid game scene. So that's pretty cool. 
Um, now we could of course start populating the world, maybe uh, placing some NPC spawners, maybe placing some regions, maybe you know adding some resource nodes, maybe transforming some of those trees into resource node so we could you know cut those trees, get some wood and so on. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much anything you needed to know on how to create a game scene. Maybe um, for those who want some extra information, if we go under world game scenes, and you might be wondering uh, how did I create this minimap? It's true that I didn't really cover that in this video, but what I do usually, um, if we go here in scene view, I'm going to go like that. I'm going to disable the fog. What I normally do, as you can see, this is very similar to what we have here, right? So what I do is I take a camera in game and I rotate it to look at the ground. I set it to uh, orthographic. So here on, that's uh, the main terrain here, main camera. I set this from a perspective to orthographic and I basically just take a screenshot and then I cut it exactly where the terrain is stopping and I save it as a square image and then I just assign it here. That's all. You can of course uh, do it however you want. You could, for example, use a screenshot and then you could have yourself or one of your artists to uh, draw on top of it and not use an actual you know, screenshot, but use like an art artistic version of it. But yeah, anyway, it's a bit out of the scope of this video, but I hope you like it. Uh, I think, well, first of all, this scene looks really great and it feels nice now to be able to um, use this. And, you know, even if it's not the scene you're actually going to use in your game, it might be good to use a scene like this already pre-made to use some of your systems, some of you to use, you know, like maybe test um, or experiment with your movement speed stats, see how quick you can navigate in the world and so on. So yeah, uh, let me know what you think. As always, if you have any question or need help, uh, let me know on the Discord and see you in a future video.